morning, good morning, good, good morning, morning, Bethany family. How you all doing? Come into the room, come into the chat. I want to introduce myself. If you don't know, I am Sister Desiree. And if you don't know, I'm Deacon Antoine. And we are so, so excited to have you here for Engage Live, the pre-show, the pre-service before our eight o'clock service this morning. So we want to make sure that you guys come on in the room. Make sure that you guys like, share, comment. And if you, this is your first time watching this broadcast, watching Bethany Baptist Church blend you all, make sure you put VIP in the comments down below so that we know not only that you're a very important person, but that we can love on you and talk to you and comment and, you know, just welcome you into the room. And guys, we want to make sure that you guys all comment and say hello to that VIP That's person, right. right? That's right. It's all about sharing mm -hmm. and being a part of the body of Christ. And letting everyone feel welcome. Mm -hmm. So the best way to do it, you share, you say hello, you say good morning, you greet your neighbor like you do at church. Amen. Absolutely. Yeah. Amen. All right. Oh. And also we have something for the <laughs> we also have something for those people who are geographically locked out. It's called the Connections Church, mm -hmm. right? It was yeah. birthed during the pandemic, a way for you guys to connect with us, even if you're two, three hours away, states away. We have members all over the world who connect with us. So if you're interested, please go to go the number two bethany.com. Sign up there and someone will be right with you. And for more information, get ready to check out this video now. Bonjour, Habari. Hola. Meow. Namaste. Drastuite. Swati. Guten Tag. Ahlan. Hey, hey. Oi. Bonjour. Hello. Wherever you're watching from around the world, we welcome you to the encounter. Worship with us. One God, one community. Join the Connections Church. So we hope you guys enjoyed that video. And because this is Engage Live, you know we can't have Come a broadcast on, about to have some fun real quick. game, right? So this game is called Angels and Demons, and it's coming from the Chestnut Checker series. So you have mind. to guess which series sermon it came from. So that means y'all had to be paying uh, attention. Okay. All right, so let's see what we got. Go ahead, Are Dad. you paying attention, though? I guess. All right, the first one is God specializes in revealing the supernatural through the simple. My God. Um, Angel or demon? That sounds like Bishop. Um, Hmm. Was it the angels? Yes. It is? Yes, it was. Okay, all right. It was the angels. All right. I hope y'all got that right. <laughs> I hope y'all got that right. See, I feel better now because I got the first one right. All right, so the next one. Deception precedes bondage. Deception. Demons all day. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> Context sure. clues, I guess. I mean, angels don't deceive. Uh, when you don't know the Lord, you are blind to significant dimensions. Mm. That could be either one. Ugh. That's a word. I'm gonna go demon. Angels. Wow. Oh, yeah. see, look, look at this. If you got it wrong, don't feel bad. It's, I got it wrong too. Okay. Thinking. Ooh, she <laughs> never hide rebellion in an act of faith. Rebellion, demon. See, she get all the easy. I'm mm. just saying, you gotta just, use your, your clues, whatever. you know? Whatever. <laughs> go ahead. You know, uh, and let's see, the last one, faith acts. Faith attaches you to invisible things of God. And that I was is angels. Angels. All day, angels. That's angels. Yes. So, so mm -hmm. uh, with that, we want to continue to celebrate Transforming Lives Month. This is still that time for Transforming mm -hmm. Lives. We hope we had the whole month. We had the whole month to share, to invite someone to all of our broadcasts, whether it was on Monday, whether it was on Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, because Saturday. Oh, my. We're here. Because we're you know, <laughs> exactly. So we hope that you had that opportunity. And we want to know also, you know, have you been transformed? Because mm -hmm. this is the time where we're on uh, hyper evangelism. Yeah. Uh, Bishop likes to call it evangelism on steroids, right? Where yeah. we just go in and we go in. So we're celebrating that by the move of God with all the messages. And you still have time to invite someone in. Absolutely. And we want to talk to you about the power of sharing, you know. So you want to make sure that not only with Transforming Lives you are sharing because that is virtual evangelism. Yeah. You know? um, and we also have another video for you guys. So make sure you check this out. Look around you. There's so much work to do. This world is in no condition for us to simply sit back and watch. There is a tangible, desperate need for Jesus. A glimpse of hope in the midst of hopelessness. Jesus experienced this. He saw it firsthand. The need broke his heart 
and filled him with compassion. He turned to his disciples and said, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. This alone should stir our hearts. It's a calling, a calling to make a difference, to share the truth of the gospel, to be a light in the darkness, to be the church. It's time for us to look beyond ourselves, to turn our focus to the field, to answer the call and passionately share the love of Jesus. This is our mandate. This is our mission. Are you ready to do the work? Well, hello there, Brother Kevin. What's going on, Sister Des? How are you, my dear? I'm doing good. You know, I couldn't let y'all do an engage without me popping up somewhere, right? Obviously we need to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we want to shout out to everyone that joins us for our drive-ins. We want to get you guys excited for our first drive-in communion service. And not only shout you guys out there, join us, but also join us on our social media platforms. So shout out to all the VIPs, all my members that join all the time. But, you know, Sister Des, you and... Brother Antoine, Deacon Antoine has some fun up here. I think it's time for us to have some fun. So I, I think it's on play, right. Because we obviously love to play games. It's called Heads Up. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go first. Sorry. Okay. Ready? Trying not to look at things. All right. So this person says godly all the time. That's a Nicholas. Oh, gosh. That was That's easy. Lamb. That was just too easy. Okay. Okay. So it's a bird. It's also uh -huh. some soap. So I know it's not a pigeon, so it must be a dove. Yes, very much so. <laughs> all right. Oh, so this month was all about this, you know, making, clean them on in the inside. What? Yeah. Clean them on on the inside? Yeah. More dove soap? Uh, you, you could use, you could, <laughs> we want to clean some souls. What's this oh, month okay, about? it's transforming. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, so it's not a demon. Ooh, so it has to be an angel. Yes. Take a look at this video now. Foolishness and shade, foolishness and fun shade, talking in the wrong side's Foolishness and shade, foolishness and fun shade, talking in the Lord's house. Friday. Friday. <laughs> So you see these beautiful people next to me? Thanks. You can also see these beautiful people on Fresh Friday as we come together and we talk about, you know, some topics and yeah. social media, a little bit of everything with a little bit of shade in there as well. Yeah. <laughs> I like how you the, the little bit the of shade. Salt <laughs> <laughs> so make sure that you join us for Fresh Friday as we have a great time. We fellowship, we laugh, and we talk about some important things on there as well, right? Absolutely. So, you know, as we are coming to the end of Engage today, we are excited for service today, right? Because, you know, a word is on the way. Absolutely. Absolutely. As well as that, you know, that worship. That's right. So we want you guys to get ready. Make sure that you join us for Engage Live after this service. Yeah, don't leave. Don't leave because we have service yes. after, right? Exactly. Now. And we have the discussion as well. So we want you guys to get ready for service, get ready to comment, get ready to like, get ready to share. It is time to get in service right now. See yeah. you there. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, worship the Lord. It's another Sunday morning. God is good. God is kind. God is worthy to be praised. Come on, lift him up. Glorify him. Magnify him. Worship the name of God. God is wonderful. Come on, you can do better than that right where you are. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the Lord's name is worthy to be praised. Come on, lift up the name of Jesus. Worship him for bringing you to another day, another week. We're getting ready to start this week off, this day off with worship, this day with praise. We're trusting and believing that God is moving in your life, moving in your heart. God is going to begin to do the wondrous things that you need in your life. Our God is a great God. And he does great things. 
We're trusting and believing that even during this time, we're going to live to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We're praying for you. We're believing God for that. We're standing with you that God is able and God is willing. Please do us a favor and share at this time. Share if you can. Let somebody know that we're on. We're getting ready to come to with you in prayer. Join with you in prayer. Believe God with you. It's the first Sunday in September. We're believing God for you as we worship the Lord this morning and come back this evening for driving communion service. We're believing God that this will be a day of rejoicing, a day of goodness, a day of God's mercy. Let us connect by faith, trusting and believing. Come on, let's pray. Father, I thank you again for this moment. We honor you for this day. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for all of your goodness. Thank you for being Jesus, for being God, for being the Lord of all. You are the Lord of glory. You are the hope of glory. And we thank you that our trust is in you. You are anchor to the ground. You are our firm foundation. Thank you for being our refuge in a time of storm. Father, we understand that the earthly kingdoms will pass away, but your kingdom will remain forever. Remind us, Lord, every single day to put our faith and trust in the king and the kingdom. That whatever goes on in the world, we can pray for your peace. We can pray for your help. But Lord, we know that we reside in another citizenship. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. We are affected by some things in this world, but your kingdom can free us, loose us, save us, and help us. So Lord, we pray as your son prayed, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in us as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of all of our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. And Father, please don't lead us into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We're so glad you joined us today. We're getting ready to go into worship. Worship God. Praise him. Stay tuned for the word of God. Praise the Lord right now. Praise the Lord, everybody. It is your boy Lonnie Hunter, Minister of Music here at Bethany Baptist Church. And, you know, sometimes when you travel around and you see different people, there's some people who have a tendency to stand out. And I was doing a uh, New Year's Eve service uh, for another church, and I happened to notice this brother on the keyboard, and he was exceptional, to say the least. And then fast forward to a couple of months ago, he ended up playing here at Bethany for our midweek service and for our praise team, along with Gary Diggs and uh, Jamie Williams. And I asked him, I said, there's, there's something else about you further than just the organ. And I found out he had a group. So he sent me something on the group and the group is phenomenal. That's why I am so excited that they are here with us this morning to share in ministry. Come on, so what I want you to do, Bethany, is show them Bethany love, a lot of hearts, a lot of comments. Let them know how you feel about them, all right? It is Stephen Hackley and Life of Worship. Well, praise the Lord, Bethany. We are so glad to be here today. We come to worship with you, come to praise with you. We ask that you would just join in as we sing these songs to praise and lift up the name of the Lord. Listen, why don't you look at somebody close to you in your house and say, can you help me lift up Jesus higher today? Come on, tell them, say, can you help me lift up Jesus higher today? We've come to lift him up. We need you right where you are just to clap your hands right there. Come on, clap, 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 clap. We're going right here. I will lift up your name. I will lift up your name. Great Jehovah. Great Jehovah. Wonderful. I will lift up your name. Come on, let's do it again. I will lift up your name higher. I will lift up your name higher. Great Jehovah. You are wonderful. I will lift up your name.
Good morning, Bethany family. It's Brother Kevin here. And I'm Maya. And we just want to stop in, you know, during service to give you a quick announcement. So, Sister Maya, here you guys got a new time for Maximize Monday. Yes. So, for September, our new time is at 12 noon. You can bring your lunch while we talk about um, an amazing topic um, for September. So, of course, for Labor Day on September 6th, we are going to be off. But we will be back again on September 13th for a whole new Maximize Monday. So, make sure you tune in with myself and Pastor Nick for that discussion. And then on Tuesday, we have the focus singles ministry as pastor nick comes with another amazing yeah. word you know the man just produces just word every know, time every time mm-hmm. every time and then wednesday we get fed on sunday uh-huh and we're gonna get fed on wednesday too <laughs> For word impact, right? Yeah. And then Thursday we go into a sound mind panel. Um, I've been loving the sound mind panels. Mm-hmm. They have really been helping so many church members as well as myself yeah. just by conversation. So we are so excited about sound mind. Absolutely. So we get that good sound mind conversation. Then you know on Friday we get the fellowship and shade for some fresh mm-hmm. Friday. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> has all the shades. So, yeah, but does. that'll be fun. It's going to be a fun time on Friday at 7 p.m. We have the whole fresh crew mm-hmm. uh, who will be here to join us for another great conversation right Kev? Absolutely and then Saturday you know we have On Point Radio at 9 a.m. Uh, drive-in service at 11 30 a.m. weather permitted mm-hmm. as well as emerging worship in that evening and then Sunday. A full day of worship. Full day. Starting with the encounter at 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. Mm-hmm. and then uh, later in that evening we will have our 10 times better discussion. Absolutely so we want you guys to stay tuned to everything that we have coming out on social media this week and we can't wait to see you get back in service now. Hallelujah, we want to praise God for who he is and everything that he's done for us, for being a provider, a protector, a wonderful God. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Because of who? You are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Because of who you are 
worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Good morning, Bethany family. If you can join me for today's scripture as I read out of the book of Joshua, chapter 5, verses 13 through 15. And the text reads, And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, what saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. It's my prayer that you feel encouraged this morning. Let's get right back into service. Hallelujah. We're just going to take a moment to worship him together, to lift him up and to bless him. I don't know about you, but the Lord has been good to me. And I just want to tell him thank you. I just want to give him praise. I want to give him honor for his grace and his favor in my life that I don't deserve. This is my season for grace, for favor. This is my season to reap what I have. This is my season for grace, for favor. This is my season, yeah, to reap what I have. So, come on, life, sing it together. This is, this is my season for grace, for grace, for favor. For That's your testimony, say. This is my seed for grace, for, grace, for, favor, for favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is Thank my you. seed to reap what, re what I have sown. Can I tell this testimony right here? Since I haven't been perfect, <laughs> but I've sure been faithful. <laughs> God's got a purpose, yeah, and I know he's able. I've got a seed in the ground that is blessing, no more stressing. I've got a seed in the ground, now I'm knowing and it's showing this is my seed. Come on, say, for grace, for, grace, for favor. Come on, let's all sing it together. This is my <laughs> to reap what I, to have. Reap what I have Come on, let's sing it one more time. Lift your voice and say, This is my seed for grace, for, grace, for favor. For favor. <laughs> this is my season. This is my seed. Let me sing the verse one more time. To reap what I have now I want you to connect with this right here and be honest with yourself and say it like this. Say, Said I haven't been perfect, <laughs> but I've show sure been faithful. <laughs> See, God's got a purpose, yeah, and I know He's able. Who we got? Say, I've got a seed, yeah, in the ground that He's blessing. Say, no more stressing. I've got a seed, yeah, in the ground. Now I know it. Come on, say, and it's showing this is my seed. Say for grace, for grace, for favor. For favor. If you know it, say this, this is, is my seed. Hey, to me, wow. hallelujah. This is my seed. This is my seed. Hey, for grace, for grace, for favor. For favor. I 
need you, everybody at home, just to wave your hand. If you can testify and say, Come on, Brittany Lyles. Let me hear you say, Everything is working. Awesome. Let me hear y'all say, everything is working together, together. for my good. Oh, yes, it is. Everything is working together, together. for my good. Let me hear you say it like this. Everybody say it like this. Say, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Say, it's good. it's good. And it's working for my good. It's good. Everything you go through, no matter how you feel, it's working. It's good. It's good. It's good. Hey, one more time, say it's good. We're good. Oh, it's working. This is my seat for grace. Yeah, for favor. What I have so everybody says this is my seed for grace, for, grace, for favor. favor. I just want to give you praise. This is my Hallelujah. Seat to reap what I have. Let's do it again. No music or sound. This is my seed. This is my seed. Everybody, welcome once again to the Encounter Worship Experience here at Bethany Church, the Transformation Church in Lindenwald, New Jersey. So glad you could take the time to join me once again as we are in an awe-inspiring, life-changing impartation of a series called Chestnut Checkers. And we have migrated through the Word of God, giving you an understanding of spiritual warfare uh, this is our spiritual warfare series that we've gone through an extensive teaching on witches, demons, and curses. And now we are concentrating on the angelic. Uh, but it's impossible to have a discussion biblically about the angelic without uh, touching on the reality of the demonic in a different way that you have seen uh, previously in this series. So we're going to take a little deeper look to show you just what happened, how it happened, uh, how angels became demons um, and how you don't have to worry about that happening again. All the angels that God would ever need are there and all the demons that were ever uh, excluded from heaven are in their numbers. They shrink um, in destruction. Before we go there though, I want to uh, once again thank you for sharing uh, it, these messages with those that you love, those that you care for, those that you think uh, this series of messages, Chestnut Checkers, will make an impact. And I want to encourage you to continue to do that because as I'm hearing your feedback and getting uh, feedback from the people you're referring the messages to, this is a teaching that has been long awaited for in a way that people are really able to grasp it so they can have faith in it, so they can walk in the authority and the power of it. So it's really important that you share with everyone. Even right now, it makes sense for you to share, tag a few people so they can uh, join the discussion, join the conversation around the conversation with angels. Before we do that, I want you to consider today where you are in your relationship with God. Uh, 
do you have one? If you have one, is it strong? Is it productive? Uh, is it clear to the people that know you that you're walking hand in hand with the Lord every day? Are you an individual that is not sure of whether they have that relationship or not? Are you depending on your grandparents or your mother's relationship, your father's relationship, your great aunt's relationship with God? And because their faith is so strong, you've adopted it for your faith. The Bible says we have to work out our own soul salvation. It means that you and I, all of us individually, have to have a personal relationship with the Lord. And that relationship must be pursued intentionally, just like we would pursue a relationship down here on earth, that that relationship might strengthen because the more you know a person, the more you love them, the more you love them, the more you believe in them. And when it comes to God, the more you love him, the more faith you have in him. Faith is connected to love in the body of Christ. So I'm getting ready to pray for you, but I want you to think about and allow the Spirit of God to answer a few questions. What have you been waiting for? What caused you to step away from God? Why haven't you come back? Why haven't you connected with a church, with a house of God? Because all of those reasons will be reasons to think yourself out of this relationship rather than think yourself into it. So I'm going to pray for you in a few seconds, and I want you to open your heart and your mind, allow the Holy Spirit to give you this invitation to come to the Lord for the very first time, to come back to the Lord. It doesn't matter how many times you've done it, to connect with this ministry so we can hand in hand walk into the destiny that God has for us. Come on, let's pray. God, I thank you right now for this opportunity. I bless your name for your goodness, your mercy, and your kindness. I thank you for all those things that you've done for us. I thank you for Jesus Christ, how we died on the cross for us. I thank you for the Spirit of God, which gives us the reality of the kingdom in our lives every day. Power to overcome, power to make it through, power to prosper. I thank you, Lord, today for those watching around the world and those that will be impacted by the words we're going to share today. But I ask you, Holy Spirit, that you would do a work for us right now. Lord, send your spirit and put a yes in the hearts and minds of those watching and listening. A yes in the minds and the hearts of those who are not saved, that don't know you for themselves, that they will decide today, right now, to give their lives to you. I thank you, Lord, because I'm believing by faith you're doing that right now. I'm praying for those that know you, Lord, but got distracted during this last year and a half, two years. Found themselves back doing the things you had delivered them from. Clearly they had changed, but now if they were honest today, Lord, they've slipped back into old habits, old ways of thinking and speaking and doing things. I pray right now you put a brand new yes in their hearts and their minds, that they would come to you today, come back to you, return as the prodigal son does in the New Testament to the Father. I pray right now for every born again believer, loves the Lord, <clears throat> committed to God, but absolutely needs a place to connect. I pray like right now, Lord, that by your spirit, you would give a yes in their heart, put a yes in their heart, so they would connect with this house of God and this ministry and this anointing. We are not created to make this journey alone. The Bible says it's not good that we be alone. So now, God, put a yes in their hearts also, that they might join hands with us as we walk in purpose and the assignment and the destiny of God and the apostolic authority of God and that the kingdom of heaven should be realized on earth. I pray right now, in Jesus' name, amen. Now what I want you to do, write me on the site. Let me know what decision you've made today. One of our ministry workers will get to you as soon as possible, set you up, tell you what you need to do to strengthen your walk. It is so important, your foundation is strong so the life you build upon that foundation has stability strength consistency and the ability to weather a storm if that's you today and you've made that decision come to god for the first time come back to god connect with god's house i want you to write me today all right let's go to the word of god if we go to isaiah chapter six dear, let's start there today isaiah chapter six so I want to start out making sure you understand the function of the angelic. Then we'll shift into some other things. 
Uh, Isaiah chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Seraphim is a level of angel. Each one had six wings, with two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he did fly. And one cried to another, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Holy, 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 the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. A conversation with angels. Angels are indeed a revelation of God's glory when they appear on earth. They are not a symbol of the glory of God. They are an extension of his glory. So if you will, to understand that, we need to know that when an angel, angelic appearance on earth, is God deciding the way he desires to show up in various situations. So the angelic presence is the glory of God or how God is presenting himself in the way he deems appropriate for whatever situation you may be in. The primary function of, of the angelic is to attend, if you will, to the glory of God, to go, give him praise and worship around the throne. When we look at Revelation chapter five, let's take a look, couple references here, just to kind of uh, build our case as it relates to function. Revelation, uh, chapter 5, and we're going to go down to verse 11. Let me get there. Revelation chapter 5, go down to verse 11. Now watch what happens. Verse 10, and has made us, now this is important, and has made us kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. God has made us kings and priests, and we shall reign in the earth. Now, you're saying, wow, how's that happen? How are we positioned? Keep your finger in chapter 5, jump over to chapter 1, and I'll show you the continuity of this truth. Watch this now. Revelation 1, keep your finger in chapter 5 because we're going right back. Verse, chapter 1 of Revelation, and verse 5 says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, the prince of the kings of the earth, pay close attention to that, the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So we become free from sin and Christ Jesus makes us kings and priests unto God in the earth. So when we saw Revelation 5, verse 10 says, and has made us kings unto our God, unto our God. This is how we uh, relate to God. This is how, who God is writing his word to, his kings and his priests, giving you authority in heaven and authority on earth, leverage on earth and a leverage in heaven. He says, I've made you, based upon the fact that I've saved you, I've made you kings and priests. Watch this, not just any old kings and priests, but unto our God. His perception of you and I, and you need this for your identity, is you are a king slash priest. An, inv an individual who moves in the spirit and also moves in the earth. And we shall reign in the earth. Now watch this, function of angels. And I beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. All right, stop counting. Too many to count. Saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. Watch this, that's, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive. Mm -mm. Watch this. So you're a king and a priest. Jesus has saved you. Now you are joint heir with Christ. And the Bible says that he has received power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and the blessing. 
Hmm. So, if you are a joint heir with Christ, and the benefit package for Christ is power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing, then my brother and my sister, you need to understand that as a king and a priest, it is appropriate for you to have these same benefits. So with the salvation comes power, comes riches, comes wisdom, comes strength, comes honor, comes glory, and blessing. Now don't throw this away because the Bible says that at some point in our lives when we're not mature in the spirit because some of these things we have yet we're not exercising them, we're not experiencing them in our lives. Stay with me right here. So the Bible says, I believe in the book of Ephesians, maybe Galatians, it talks about immaturity being the heir of everything but not being able to influence anything yet. That it is imperative that the, that the inexperienced inheritor be taught until the father sees signs that he or she is ready to receive the benefits of his position. This is amazing here. So in this context, we see the angels are pronouncing the benefits, if you will, or that which the Lord has received. Watch this, verse 13. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth, under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them heard I say in blessing, here it comes, and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne, unto the Lamb forever and forever. So we are kings and priests sent to the earth, we, like angels, are sent in apostolic authority to the earth. Now, don't get this twisted. It doesn't make you an apostle. It uh, designates the authority you've been given by God to reign in the earth. King, priest. Watch this now. So we are to be messengers, not just with our voices, but with our lives, messengers of God's grace. Now, it is impossible for us to go any further until we understand something clearly. There are some angels that are missing from heaven. There are some angels that are missing from heaven. Let's go to 2 Peter. I want to show you something very quickly. 2 Peter chapter 2. And let's go down to verse 4, just, just for time's sake. For God spared not the angels that sinned, watch that, made a decision to go against the will of God, all right? And they did it for a reason. I'll show it to you in a minute. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So there are some, there's a demonic force one third of the angelic host that rebelled along with Lucifer and now find themselves limited to a sphere of operation. Some of them, watch this, delivered them into chains of darkness. The chains of darkness. Mm. From the liberation of light to the chains of darkness darkness. Now watch this. Why is God using this kind of language? Because I've taught you before, when you open your Bible, you're now seeing the illustrations or the inventory of the content of the invisible kingdom of God. So immediately my human mind thinks of chains chained to a wall. But no, the demonic a chain to darkness. They can't escape the darkness. And they have to stay there. Watch this. That sounds like judgment, but there's another judgment coming for them. Man, this is powerful stuff. Look at this now. So let's keep going because uh, I want you to see all of it. Now, where was that? Verse 4. So they're chains of darkness. Watch this. To be reserved unto judgment. Watch what happens. Go to Jude, right before Revelation. And I want to show you verse 6, Jude, verse 6. Watch what happens now. 
And the angels, watch this, which kept not their estate, didn't keep their position, but left their habitation, their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness. You see it, unto the judgment of the great day. So we, we, we as, as chains physical would be to us, darkness is to them. So they are restricted in the sphere that they've been banished to. My God, my God, watch this now. So these angels, if you will, or demons, are imprisoned in a place called Tartarus, awaiting judgment. Now let me show you something. Go to Ezekiel uh, chapter 28. Let's take a look at it. Ezekiel 28. So what I want to show you here is a contrast now. Watch this. I'm going to show you some stuff, and I think you will see the continuity. Go to Ezekiel 28. And let's go down to, um, let's start at verse 11. I was going to start at verse 14, but let's start at verse 11 for context, just in case you've never read this before. Ezekiel 28, go to verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. Lamentation is a complaint or, or uh, a protest, Okay upon the king of Cyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. Now I want you to remember, the Bible is very illustrative, and the Bible often gives you examples of one thing to reveal another to you. Watch how this works now. Thou sealest up the sum, you're full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. You have been in Eden, the garden of God, Every precious stone was your covering, the sardis, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and gold covering. The workmanship of your tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee the day that thou was created. So what I want you to get a sense of is a garment bejeweled top to bottom. And then I want you to get a sense of, if you will, your ribs, not the bones you have, but literally pipes to a musical instrument, like an organ. So you've got this, this individual who sparkles, and when he's moving around heaven, flying around heaven, makes music. Watch what happens. Thou art the anointed cherub, another dimension of angels. You saw seraphims in Isaiah 6, now here comes the cherub. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. And I have set thee so that thou was upon the holy mountain of God, in the place close to God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. This is amazing. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that you were created until iniquity found thee. I love the way the Bible uh, phrases things until iniquity finds thee. So, so uh, crookedness, inward crookedness, that's the definition for iniquity, is seeking individuals. New Testament, Satan is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, seeking who he can consume. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So the Bible is letting us know that this anointed cherub, this beautiful individual, wow, gets pride and falls, this anointed cherub. Now we know this is Lucifer. Lucifer, not only did he fall from his estate, but he fell from his name. He went from being known as Lucifer in heaven to the cherub, the anointed cherub, to Satan in the earth and in hell. Now watch what happens. Go with me to Exodus 23. Let me show you something. Exodus 23. And I want to take you down to verse 20. Now, so let's, Ezekiel 28 is describing 
what Lucifer looked like before the fall. Said he was perfect, beauty and wisdom. Got hung up on himself and decided, I'm going to take God's place. Whole bunch of angels got together with him. We'll get there in just a second. Watch this now. So, when we look at Ezekiel 24, 20, I need to, we're talking about function now. So, so the angel's function was originally to give glory to God. We understand that Lucifer's, one of Lucifer's main job was not just praise and worship like we've been told, but his, one of his main job was covering the glory of God. It's gonna be real important to your understanding. Now, so, so they, we're describing fallen angels at that point. Function. Now let's take a look at Exodus 23, 20, and we're gonna see what holy angels, start to look what their function is, gotta compare the two. God is saying, behold, verse 20, Exodus 23, 20, I send an angel before you to keep you in the way, to bring you into the place which I have prepared. This is gonna be wonderful. So we see now, the brilliance of the original creativeness of God in making angels, brilliant individuals, perfect in wisdom, perfect in beauty. Okay, watch what happens. So this supernatural individual, at one point his function was the glory of God, his, the, the stewardship of the glory of God, but also the function of angels, mm -hmm was to do what? I send an angel before you to work for you as a child of God. That one of his assignments, one of their assignments is to work for you, to go before you, to keep you in the way. That means protection. To bring you, that means to guide you. To what? To a place that I have prepared, that I have promised in my word. So we see this manifestation of the glory of God in angelic form to the saints versus the fallen glory, if you will, or the fallen angels or the demonic as compared to the holy. Now this is all gonna make sense in a minute. Let me show you one more thing. Go to Luke chapter 24, Luke 24. And I just need to show you these things. I don't want you guessing. Uh, in order to have faith in the angelic, you must have an understanding of this dimension in the spirit. It is not enough to guess. It is not enough to hear what other people have said, which is why I'm turning to the text now. Luke 24, and go down to verse 23. Now watch what it says. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen in a vision of angels which said that he was alive so watch what happens so we have to understand that if the angels are an extension I'm getting excited because I'm going to tell you something you're going to love an extension of God's glory it is what we know as Shekinah glory what is Shekinah a visible manifestation of the invisible God, a light with a cloud, a light within a cloud revealing the immediate presence of God. All right, a light within a cloud revealing the immediate presence of God, the Shekinah. All right, let's see what that looks like in scripture now, because I need you to get it. So this manifestation of the glory of God, watch this, go to Hebrews chapter one. Let me show you something. I hope you're getting this. Write me on the site, let me know what's going on. Stay with me. Hebrews chapter one. Thank you, Lord. Verse one, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his son. Now, the ultimate revelation of God is not angels. The ultimate revelation of God is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Watch this. Whom he hath appointed heir of all things. Uh-oh. Yep. 
and you're a joint heir with him. Power, honor, wisdom, riches, glory, blessing. By whom also he made the worlds. God was there in the beginning. Jesus was there in the beginning. The Holy Ghost was there in the beginning. The Bible says there was nothing made that was not made by him. Meaning God, Christ, and the Spirit of God. Here it is. Who being the brightness, here's the Shekinah the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So this visible manifestation of the invisible God, this light, this express image of his glory. Let's go to Exodus chapter two, chapter three show you something very quickly. Exodus chapter 3. I need you to see these things so that they're in your heart. That's where the word has to be hidden. Exodus chapter 3. Okay, now, here's another example of Shekinah. Go down to verse 2. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and, be and, and, looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. What's the great sight? Why the bush is not burnt. Watch this now. And when the Lord saw that he also turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the bush, mm, out of the midst of the bush, and said, Moses, Moses, he said, here am I. Watch where it goes now. So now we see the Shekinah is the manifestation. We see it's a physical manifestation on earth. Well, here we go now. Go to 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. You stay with me. I know I'm making you turn a lot this, this morning, but you stay with me. I've got, got to tell you something. 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Here it comes. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God should shine unto them. Jesus, when he came to earth, was an example or if the manifestation of Shekinah glory. Now, why do I show you these things? The reason evil seems to be increasing in the earth, in, your, in, in, the, in the world around us, is because Satan is running out of time. But Jesus has come, taken Satan's authority, so Satan no longer has authority over the believer. What'd you say, Pastor? Satan no longer has authority over you. You are dealing with, watch this, watch how our understanding has been kind of twisted up. You are not dealing with angels from the heavenly position or posture. You're dealing now with the demonic, which are fallen angels. Which means, my brother and my sister, because of salvation, you have, if you will, if I can use this word, a superiority over them. Now go to Isaiah 14. Let me show you something. Isaiah 14. Now, this is going to make perfect sense now. Just had to get you to this place where you would see the continuity. So we know they're good angels, bad angels, heavenly angels, angels that are, that are banished to hell. We're going to Isaiah 14. Now, it's important that we get this. I'm going to read verses 9 through 12. Isaiah 14, verses 9 through 12. Yes, it's going to be good. Watch this now. Hell from beneath is moved for you to meet you at thy coming. It stirs up the dead for you, even all the chief ones of the earth. It has raised up from their thrones all the kings of nations. Watch this now. Now talking about realms of the demonic, realms of evil, Dimensions of, of angelic, archangels, angels, cherubim, seraphims. Watch this. Dimensions of the demonic, angels. You see it right here. All right? Got chief ones. And, and watch this. And the people they influence. So all those people that died connecting with 
the devil greeting Satan when he arrives. Watch this now. And they all, and they shall speak and say unto you, art thou also become as weak as we? Watch this. Prophesy. They shall speak and say unto you, art thou become as weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down. Remember how splendid he looked. To the grave, hell, and the noise of thy vials or instruments. The worm is spread unto you. The worms cover you. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cast down to the ground, which dis weaken the nations? Wow. In other words, what are you doing down here? How did you end up in this place? This fallen angel, this, this Lucifer, this cherub, this son of the morning. And then we know Satan has his followers working against the saints and they are called demons. Now, what is the issue? God has an assignment for the angels concerning you. Let's go to Genesis 24. Let me show it. God has an assignment for the angels concerning you. Genesis 24. I hope you're getting this. I love teaching this stuff to you all. Genesis 24. Let's go down to verse 40. Okay. Now. And he said unto me, the Lord before whom I walk, watch this, will send his angel. Now, the story is about uh, Abraham sending the servant to get a wife for, for Isaac. So he's sending, don't know yet in the story, for Rebecca. He's going to, he's going to get a wife for Isaac. Abraham is talking, is sending in authority. And here is the servant testifying a spiritual reality. Watch what it says now, verse 40. And he said unto me, the Lord, this is, what, this is what faith or Abraham said to the servant. You, get, you better get this part. This is what faith slash Abraham said to the servant when he was sending him on the mission. I need, I need you to get this. Watch this now. And he said unto me, servant talking, the Lord before whom I walk will send his angel with you and prosper your way. Hmm. He'll send an angel to prosper your way. 41. Then thou shalt be clear from this thy oath when thou comest to my kindred, and if they give not thee one, thou shalt be clear of my oath. So they came to an agreement. They grabbed each other under the thigh, which was the oath. And now, you know, God is, he's saying, if God doesn't do this, it's not your responsibility. 42. And I came this day unto the well. All right, so the servant has crossed the ground, he's gotten to the well, he's gotten to the event, to the place at which he's looking for, watch this, a manifestation of faith, a realization of faith, and a measurable outcome from faith. Watch this now. And I came this day unto the well and said, O Lord God, of my master Abraham, if now thou do prosper my way, which I go. Then he begins to speak. Sends an angel to prosper his way as a response to faith. This is amazing. Then, when he gets to the place, he begins to decree the words of faith. And when he decrees those words of faith, the angels go into high gear in their work. So to prosper means a good reward for your work. In other words, what we call success. So to prosper, listen closely now, write this down, is a process that leads to the fulfillment of purpose, of the purpose for which a thing or person is created. To prosper, a process that leads to fulfillment 
of purpose for which a thing or person is created. So he decrees, the servant decrees, in agreement with faith. Why? Because the angels now go into hyperdrive. So Abraham has spoken and the servant has decreed and now the angelic begin to go into overtime. Now watch what happens. What, Psalm 144, let's see what the work of these angels look like. Psalm 144. I think I'm running out of time. Oh my goodness, I'm out of time. Psalm 144, I'm gonna have to finish this next week because I have a lot to tell you and I don't want you to miss any of it. And I don't wanna rush past it for you. Psalm 144, let's go down to verse 12. That our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace, that our garners may be full, affording all manner of store, that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our streets, that our oxen may be strong to labor, that there be no breaking in nor going out, that there be no complaining in our streets. Happy, watch this, is that people. Work of angels. Happy is that people, good success. Happy is that people, angels that bring prosperity to the people of God, lead us to prosperity, preserve us while we're doing what we have to do, not keeping our part out of it. Our part in the function is there. We must perform our part of God's process, but the angels prepare the way for us. Happy is that people that is in such a case, yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. So angels come to work with you, demons work against you because the demonic is, if you will, jealous that you now hold a position that they can no longer hold. Watch this now. So faith and you decreeing the word of God and the words of faith cause angels to go to work on your behalf. And these angels work for your success. The demonic work against it, try to distract you to get out of the will of God so you can have something that looks like success. Imagine if the demonic can give you their form of success, God's success would be a thousand times more. I remember when I was um, a younger man and, and we were, um, talking to a fellow that uh, worked with me and he was about to go to Chick-fil-A. And uh, one of the things he liked about Chick-fil-A was that uh, they didn't work on Sundays. Now, he wasn't a Christian at the time, but I was. And uh, I thought it was significant that they would take the Sabbath off according to the word of God. Now, of course, when Chick-fil-A came on the market, um, millions of people said that they were losing millions of dollars because they were not open on Sundays. But the, um, the originators of Chick-fil-A said, no, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna keep the Sabbath holy. And we're, watch this, and we're not going to work Sundays to make our employees go against the will of God. Well, it turns out now, no other restaurant, in this, no other restaurant entity in the world closes on Sunday except Chick-fil-A. And consequently, and not coincidentally, I say consequently because all of our actions have consequences, good or bad. They're the number one most profitable restaurant entity in the world because they've kept the Sabbath holy. They're happy, are they? The other thing that they do really well is they bless God's people. They, they, they're blessing to the people that work for them. And because they're a blessing to them, wealth is promised to them. You need to hear me now. So you've got angels, when you are in the will of God, here's my point, the angels start to prepare the way for you and start working for your success. All right, I'm out of time, but you know I'm not out of word today. We're gonna start right there. 
uh, right in the midst of this talk about prosperity. I'm going to show you the rest of the angelic involvement. Um, I'm going to break out for you next time the difference if there really is one between angel of the Lord and the angel of the Lord. And should you be concerned about that when you see it in the Bible? I'm going to show you there's a slight distinction sometime, but I don't want you to get all tricked up about it. Okay, don't make yourself anxious as long as you understand the function of angelic presence and the apostolic authority that angels come and perform their assignments as they work for the saints. I need to get that into your spirit because they taught us something else for the first 25, 30 years of my saving life, saved life. Angels work for the saints, Hebrews 1.14. They are ministering spirits working for the saints. This is real important for you to understand. All right, so it's amazing to me how the angelic gets to work and prosperity is one of their assignments in your life. You've got to get this revelation or you'll miss God's season for you the next time it comes. So what happens is angels come and get engaged in the process by which your purpose on this earth is fulfilled. And one of those purposes is that you would establish God's covenant in the earth. And the Bible is clear about this, that God gives us the power to produce so we can establish his covenant in the earth. Now what you've got to do right now is understand how that flow is established and what causes uh, the angelic to start working on your behalf. One of the greatest challenges for human beings is in the area of obeying God's word as it relates to finances. It's just a struggle for a lot of people because we only look at money as though it's a physical thing. When in actuality, you know, man didn't suddenly come up with money one day and God was shocked and said, ooh, what's this man's mate? No, that didn't happen like that. Money is first a spiritual principle. You remember when Jesus was teaching, he said, you can't, you can't worship God and mammon at the same time. Both are spiritual. The manifestation of finances is the money you have in your hand. So watch what happens. God says, if you want to get the breakthrough, if you want the angels to begin to work as it relates to your money, to your finances, you've got to give and it shall be given unto you. When you give, all of a sudden the angelic host begins to work on your behalf. This is making so much sense. When I tithe, angels start to open up windows of heaven. Angels start to fight the demons and the devils on our behalf. Here it comes. Angels start to protect what's being birthed out of your labor. It's an amazing revelation that if you get it today and you suddenly decide, okay, I'm going to step into the obedience of the word of God. I'm going to move by faith so the angels can move on my behalf. I'm going to speak God's word. Don't just obey the scripture, decree it. God, open up these windows of heaven today. Pour this blessing out so I won't have room enough to receive it. Rebuke the devourer for my sake. Protect what I'm working on, God. Put your hand on my hand so what I'm working on is blessed. Touch everything my foot touches. Open up a dimension of the spirit. Here it is. Money is first a spiritual principle in the word of God. So when I move in the natural as it relates to our finances, then I'm actually moving in the spirit. That act of faith moves heaven on my behalf. Go to the icons today. Return that tithe and that offering to the Lord Give him that, return the tithe, return the offering. And some of you today know full well that God has laid a sacrificial seed on your heart for a long time, but you've been resisting and wondering why you can't seem to break through. Because now that you've got the revelation that this, 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 these bills and this change that we have are nothing but manifestations of a spiritual principle, and if I want to move the spirit as it relates to my finances, I've got to move in obedience to the word of God by faith because faith is the invisible link between where I am and what God desires to give you. Go to the icon, sow your seeds today, release your tithes and your offerings. And I want you to remember faith acts like a thing is so, even when it's not so, that it might be so. God bless you and I'll see you next time.